for they shall inherit the earth. That means that they're inheriting the earth because they're humble, they're teachable. Humus, which the word earth comes from, also shares the same root as humility. They come from the same root. This is about being teachable. So now we're being teachable, and then Jesus gives the fourth beatitude, which is the devil card. He said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I, I like the fact that it wasn't blessed to those who are a little peckish. He says, hunger and thirst. What happens is, now you've been given your knowledge, you have a passion for works of mercy, social justice. When did we see you hungry and feed you and thirsty and give you water and naked and clothe you and in prison and visited you and when you were sick came unto you? When you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. That's the works of mercy. That's the beginning. But it's not just the occasional works of mercy. This is hunger and thirst where you now become passionate about social justice. And then we have the test of the flaming sword. We're going to run out of time so that. The test of the flaming sword is, have you finished with your narrative? Have you completely finalised being controlled by the seven-year-old? Do you want to know how you do that? I'll give it to you in a really simple description. In having that narrative, you developed a whole lot of gifts and abilities. You became good at stuff in order to rise above the limitations of your story. And instead of being defined by them, you're now inspired by them. And what happens is you take the gifts of your story and you use it to serve the works of mercy. Now you're using your gifts to bless humanity. Your gifts aren't about developing a sense of, am I okay? Because it's, it's all about us and we're focused on us and we're worried about, am I doing any good? And I have to work harder, I've got to do this better. And, I, and we, we, we just, we, but we develop these skills. And what happens is, in this place here, we are no longer doing it for ego. We're now doing it to serve. We use those skills to bless the lives of others. That's where you know what it is that you've got to do. You, everybody happy to keep on going for another quarter of an hour? Or yeah, even 10 minutes just too good to, to, to cut. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Now, having passed the test of the flaming sword, now you can enter the house of God which is the next car. You know, most of you know this is the tower. They, they really weakened the essence of what this is about. This is about the house of God. This is where the world of illusion no longer holds any credence. And in fact, it's about the destroying of the material. And all of these cards now have things in the air, which is about the etheric. It's about the essence of what's within us within our beingness, not our worldliness. And this is the point at which we have finally made the commitment to completely let go of our attachment. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let go of all these other things because they'll be added unto you. You don't have to worry about them. They'll be provided for you and this is the point at which we are now seeking the kingdom of God. The star card. Works of mercy. These are the spiritual works of mercy. These are the advanced principles of practicing love. This is forgiveness, the most difficult. And do you know what the most difficult aspect of forgiveness is? Forgiving yourself. Having the ability to forgive yourself. So the works of mercy are 
Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Do good to those that hate you, etc., etc. That's what he was talking about here. This is another whole level of turning up in the world. Of course, the miracle says, if peace is your priority, then forgiveness is your only function. Forgiveness is remembering that there's only two motives to all behaviour. It's either an extending of love or a call for help. Forgiveness is holding the awareness that when you see somebody doing something that has you feel a little bit prickly, being able to say, what could this person tell me that would help me understand why they are the way they are? But in terms of self-forgiveness, when you feel prickly, it's about saying, what's my story got to do with me reacting in this way right now?